Hi everyone and welcome to New Egg TV. My name is Paul and today I'm going to be doing an overview on the Crucial M4 256GB SSD that's right here. But I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Paul, you've already done a video on the Crucial M4 256GB SSD and you would be correct. I'm actually doing a video on this one. So looking at these two SSDs, they are different yet the same and uh, I'm going to sort of give a comparison between the two because, uh, well, that's what I do. Anyway, uh, here is a look at the internals of the standard Crucial M4 256 gigabyte model. And as you can see, you got a PCB, you have a bunch of NAND modules. You also have this chip right here, which is a 256 megabyte DDR3 chip, uh, which is used for caching. And then on the flip side, you can see the actual controller right there, and that is the Marvell 88SS9174. Uh, which is an extremely popular controller. It's also, um, at least with Crucial's implementation with the M4, has been very stable. It's gotten really good reviews um, with the versions of this that we have up on Newegg.com. So you'll notice here you have uh, eight NAND chips on this side. You also have uh, eight NAND, I should say, modules on this side as well. And that gives you your entire raw capacity of 200, 256 gigabytes. That said, this one is much, much smaller, and I'm always sort of amazed as uh, storage gets smaller and smaller that you can actually have 256 gigs on a little unit that's this tiny. So apart from the interface, which is mSATA, which is one of the more significant differences, uh, the other largest difference here is really just going to be NAND density. So um, you can't really see as well because you have the sticker right here, but this is the controller, that Marvell controller just like that one. You see they're the same size, same controller. Uh, this is your 256 megabyte DDR3 cache right there. And then you have simply four NAND modules, two on the front, two on the back. Each of those NAND modules has 64 gigabytes of capacity. That gives you uh, 256 gigabytes raw capacity. Uh, if you actually install this and format it, you'll end up with about 238 gigabytes of actual usable storage. So um, apart from the storage interface, uh, you have rated speeds, and again, those are very, very uh, similar. Uh, you're going to get uh, up to about 50,000 input-output operations per second with the mSATA version, uh, which is the same rated speed as the full-size or 2.5-inch version. Uh, and then you're going to need to install this in an mSATA slot, and uh, if you're not familiar with mSATA, that's the plug right there on the end. Couple. Uh, important things about this, and just for an example, I'm actually going to use this little riser card. This is actually from an Asus motherboard. This is a combo card. So uh, the cool thing about mSATA is it uses what is actually M or Mini PCIe. So there you can see mSATA labeled on that side. You can see Mini PCIe on this side, and uh, Asus made this riser card to be able to accommodate one of each. So on this side, you would put what usually goes into an MPC M PCIe slot, which in a notebook is probably going to be a wireless card, a Wi-Fi card. Uh, over on this side is mSATA, and the plug itself right there is actually exactly the same. Physically, they're the same plug. All it is is that mSATA is a mPCIe uh, slot wired for a SATA connection, so the same type of data and power connectors that you would have on the full-size uh, serial ATA power and data ports right there. Um, now, the only real difference apart from that as far as usability of this device is uh, not many actual laptops, I'm, I'm sorry, not many actual desktop implementations will use an mSATA SSD. And uh, that makes sense actually because they're so tiny. They're really best applied in a laptop environment. In fact, as far as I know, there are not any motherboards existing right now that will give you an mSATA slot that's actually wired up for uh, Serial ATA Revision 3, which these are capable of, which gives you six gigabits per second of uh, of uh, bandwidth on the uh, serial ATA bus. So uh, as far as a desktop impl implementation, you probably aren't going to be looking for this one. You'll probably go with the full-size 2.5-inch version right there. But for a laptop, it's a great upgrade. So to properly test this mSATA SSD, because I do like to benchmark SSDs that come across our lab, I had to find an appropriate laptop since I don't have a little mSATA to standard SATA adapter card. Uh, so this one actually fits the bill. This is our MSI GT70 gaming laptop. Actually came with uh, two mSATA SSDs in RAID. So I was able to sort of reconfigure this uh, to provide a testing environment for our little uh, M4. And uh, both of these little mSATA ports here are also uh, wired for PC, I'm sorry, for uh, Serial ATA Rev 3. That's 6 gigabit per second. So we get the full rated speed and it's a laptop environment. 
and uh, this is also a Ivy Bridge based system, so uh, it's a fairly new system. To install an MSAID SSD, you simply put it in like that, it'll kind of pop up a little bit, then you'll lower it down and then there are two screws which I'm about to use my third hand to screw in. So next up, let's take a look at some benchmarks. I got the Crucial M4 connected to the laptop as a separate drive, so not the OS drive, and I ran uh, AS SSD, uh, Crystal Disk Mark, as well as Atto. So here are my results. We're going to start off with AS SSD, and there is the results in the lower left. This is the same test. I'm just showing input-output operations per, sep per second on the right and the actual megabytes per second listings on the left side. So overall score of 650, uh, which is right in line with uh, the higher-end SSDs on the Marvell controllers that we've seen from Crucial. Uh, as you can see, the rated input-output operations per second for read, uh, we hit 45,000 just shy 45,799 on the read, 53,830 on the right. Again, overall score of 650. Access time, which is always a strong point of SSDs, 0 0.089 milliseconds on the read and 0 0.522 milliseconds on the right. So some very impressive scores. Also at this point, I should mention uh, we're using the integrated Serial ATA controller in, the, uh, in this laptop, which is the HM77 chipset. Let me just close that one up, and we'll take a look at Crystal Disk Mark next. I run Crystal Disk Mark in two modes. Uh, one mode is it uses compressible data, so that's what we're looking at here. The, ben the results are on the upper left here. For read, we hit 473.8 megabytes per second. For write, just under 260 megabytes per second. Uh, really good 4K results here as well. 4K, you'll notice uh, if you're doing typical day-to-day -day computer use, it's one of the most frequent types of actual disk access that uh, SSDs will encounter. So it, it's uh, important to look at 4K results uh, to sort of give a better idea of uh, the day-to-day -day use because uh, the big sequential read and write numbers are they're big and impressive, but really you're only going to be hitting those values in certain use case scenarios. Uh, so again, on the, on the lower area here, we have input out, output operations per second listed. That's for the Q-Depth 32 test. Again, this is a synthetic test that's really just trying to see what this SSD can do. Uh, again, we hit uh, 46,500 input output operations per second on the read. 58,500, so a little bit better than the AS SSD test on the right. I will jump, oh nice, jump next to the incompressible test. So this is Crystal Disk Mark running in standard mode with incompressible data. Uh, and again, pretty much the same numbers here. Uh, depending on the controller, some controllers use compression uh, before it stores the data, so that can change these values. But uh, in this case, the M4 uh, doesn't do so much compression. So again, similar numbers, a little bit, a little bit higher results on the input output operations per second there at the bottom. But uh, there you have it, those two tests. Finally, we have Atto, which is uh, sort of the go-to standard that you see uh, a lot of actual SSD manufacturers using when they list uh, especially the maximum read and write speeds that uh, any drive is capable of. Uh, so this is Q-Depth 4, and uh, for writes, we hit 270. It looks like 270 uh, was the max we hit on our write tests. And for reads, uh, again, we are surpassing the rated specs on the box. We hit uh, 542 megabytes per second. Uh, again, also ran this at Q-Depth 10, which is right here, uh, which really gave similar numbers here. We hit, uh, actually, we hit about 550, 550 megabytes per second right there on the reads, and that's uh, about as fast as you can get with your modern day SATA Gen 3 drives, and then for writes, we hit 270 megabytes per second. And that's going to wrap it up for this video, guys. Once again, this has been the Crucial M4 256 gigabyte MSATA SSD. And just since I didn't list off the entire model number yet, it's CT256 M4 SSD 3, not the 2, 3. I'm Paul with Newegg TV, and if you enjoyed today's video, you can head over to our Newegg YouTube channel, and don't forget to subscribe for more tech videos. Thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you next time.